Hey everybody, JB back once again with more CCLP2. I went out for a run and I think I'm feeling a little bit better now. I'm still kind of a little bit upset. And again, I don't really want to talk about that here on the YouTube channel, but um, anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and play these levels and we'll see what happens. Hopefully this will be a lot of fun. And anyway, this is Mads Rush 2. It's a sequel to the earlier level, Mads Rush 1, and that was not very well timed. And this level is very uh, infamous for, uh, well not that, but for a bold route that is really, really tight and rigid because of that random force floor section. Pretty much you have to be perfect on the random force floors in order to get in front of that ball that you saw there. It's really crazy. I mean, just really crazy. Yeah, like that right there, this especially would not be acceptable. Uh, no, come on. Okay, well, whoa. There we go. Yeah, if you're not going for the bold time, this level can actually be kind of a little bit intimidating, but thankfully we made it, so that's nice. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're done. On to Checkerboard 1. That level was made by Ann Olson, by the way. This one is another Dale Bryan level, and this level is probably one of the most infamously difficult levels in all of CCLP2. It's a block pushing level, and you pretty much have to push almost every one of these blocks. I mean, I think you can get away with pushing all but two if you were really strict, but I mean, it is crazy. It is a crazy level to optimize, and in fact, the bold time still remains unconfirmed to this for day. As of this recording session, it still remains unconfirmed. So I'm not entirely certain what all is involved in getting it, but I have an idea. I don't want to reveal anything here uh, in case it ends up being correct, but uh, it is an interesting thing to think about. So yeah, checkerboard one. Um, I do think it's a very nicely designed level though. I mean, I, I don't knock it for that. And again, I, I feel like a lot of these levels made it in just because the aesthetics of them looked cool. But on top of all the block pushing, one of the most frustrating things about this level is that it does involve a lot of guesswork. And I use the term guesswork because these blue walls, you don't know which ones are open and which ones are closed until you get there, providing that you're not really looking at the level in the editor or anything like that. So it's a little bit unfair um, to anyone playing this level completely blind. I mean, it, it's just really, really annoying. But I do happen to know what the, the correct route is, and I think there are technically a few routes that work, but especially on the, the other side of the level, because there are two major sections to push the blocks through, there is a very specific route you have to take uh, in order to make it through. In this section, it's a little looser, but that section, that section is a little more rigid, and I'm not really a big fan of rigidity on this scale. Not when the entire level takes this amount of time. So I'm just going to try to go through the level um, as quickly as I can. I, I don't know if it's really going to work or not, but we'll find out. And I'm going to save the rest of this stuff for later. I'm going to try to get some of the other stuff here done. So I haven't really talked about design in the CC world very much uh, lately. And there has been some time that has passed since... Um, I kind of had this discussion way back when I was playing Rock Generu sets. Personally, I'm a little bit torn about level design. Like, it's one of those things that it's really tricky to quantify what is considered good when it comes to level design. Now, one of the things that Rock and, to a certain extent, some other designers have kind of railed against has been this sort of cleanness in levels. And to be perfectly honest, I can kind of see where they're coming from with that. I think what kind of got me to realize that was I was playing CC2 last year, and I think I mentioned this back when I was playing through that game. You know, I really enjoyed seeing all the, you know, kind of messy levels that didn't really have much in terms of, you know, technical, like technically correct design sense. 
You know, like a lot of them were just kind of messy, you know, whatever kind of levels. And to be honest, I kind of like that to a certain degree. Now, I'm not saying that people should make sloppy stuff. I'm, I'm not trying to say that. I guess what I'm trying to say is that there is room for, you know, some sort of, you know, let's make some levels with a little bit of, you know, hey, whatever, just have a good time with this and all that without having to worry about, oh, is this symmetrical enough and stuff like that. And there are very few, in my estimation, very few designers who do this well. But I'd have to say that one of the ones that I really look up to a lot is Daniel Bomeister. Um, he was one of the designers who really came on board after CCLB2 was released. And basically his whole deal was that he was trying to make levels that were kind of like the original game. I think I mentioned him in one of my previous videos here in this Let's Play. And one of the rules, I re distinctly recall this, I, one of the rules that he came up with for himself for when it came to designing levels was that he wasn't about to make every single room super perfect looking. Like, he really wanted stuff to look, uh, and I don't want to use this term too lightly because it gets overused, but uh, organic. Like, he really wanted to make each room look like it was an actual room in a place that was pretty expansive. And not just, uh, oh, hey, here's, you know, a square room. So one of the levels that I've always really enjoyed from his set is called The Chambers. And it's basically just this room where you go through and you get a bunch of chips um, and uh, mainly a bunch of keys, actually, from a room full of gliders. And it's not really much for a challenge, but... Everything is built so well from an aesthetic standpoint, and I cannot believe that just happened. <sighs> Please, let's not have that happen again. Let's not have that happen again. That was just totally, totally... Uh, I, I, I just... I cannot believe that happened. I mean, we were on our way to getting the last row of stuff done. And it's the longest part of the level, too, because you have to construct a really long path. But I guess it will afford me some more time to talk about level design and stuff, so it's, it's all right. Well, playing CC2 last year, it kind of reminded me of that sort of, you know, hey, let's just build rooms without really, you know, making make, like feeling like they have to be built this way kind of thing and I liked that you know I really liked that and yet for a lot of the levels and I don't want to say this you know and give more credit than um, is deserved but a lot of the levels were just really nicely done and they almost felt like there was some sort of intention behind the fact that oh yeah, you know, there's nothing in this area, and that's all right. There doesn't have to be a thing that serves a purpose as far as gameplay is concerned. It can serve a purpose with respect to the design feeling really nice to walk around in. Like, for instance, one of the levels, and I use this example quite a bit, so I'm sorry if this is old news to some of you guys who've watched my channel for forever, but one of the levels from CC1, and I'd say CC1 has its fair share of, you know, very neatly designed levels, too. I'm, it's definitely not a, you know, hey, whatever kind of set. But one of the levels that is kind of a little bit whatever at first is Suicide, level 86. And for those of you who don't remember which one that is, that's the one where you have to direct a bunch of gliders into this row of bombs on the, the bottom area. And there's a bunch of balls bouncing around. They serve almost no purpose at all except you know, to be stuff that you have to dodge. And yet, they make the level fun. And yet there's this, also this little wall formation that's in, like, the southeast area. That doesn't really serve much of a purpose either. Like, you don't really have to bounce any gliders off of that at all. You don't have to worry about taking blocks over there and manipulating monsters and whatever. It's just there. But yet, it adds to the design in a pretty cool way. And I can't deny that that holds merit. That's not just an accident. That's not just a... I, I'd like to think the designer actually thought that through, you know. 
I, I'd like to think that. I mean, maybe that was just random and arbitrary and he didn't care. But in my estimation, at least, that added something to the experience. It wasn't just the experience being, let's just move a bunch of stuff to the end. You know, it's a total package. And I like it when the total package can surprise you, even you know though there's some conventional stuff there. So, admittedly, going back to uh, CC2, CC2 had some levels that were just kind of like, really? You know, I'm not going to deny that. I, I don't want to diminish that in any way. But at the same time, there were some levels that kind of felt like a breath of fresh air. And I think we could kind of stand to learn something from those. So, I'm all for having some levels in CCLPs that are just kind of a little bit, huh? You know, just... They don't seem to actually have the same sort of, you know, everything has a purpose sort of layout that everything else has. But at the same time, I do think that there needs to be, you know, some standard of quality that we all agree to. I don't think that standard of quality is that everything has a purpose, though. I think it means that there is a package that includes you know, aesthetics as defined by not only how something looks, but how it feels. And I think how it feels is something that is so hard to quantify that a lot of designers <coughs> who have levels that are good on that level manage to have those levels, um, I don't want to say by accident because, you know, that's not really true. A lot of them do involve a lot of intense planning, but I think the feeling good about the design and everything kind of comes with the territory of what kind of level it is as well. I don't know if that makes any sense, but like if you're if you have for instance a level that's sort of an open-ended maze and you have a very specific, oh, this is what I'm going to do with my maze when you're building it, then chances are that your level will have this sense of identity about it that it wouldn't have had otherwise if you didn't think about that. And the same thing goes for a level that almost has, you know, almost no purpose at all. I mean, if you thought that through beforehand, you know, hopefully that will show. And there are some levels that do a pretty good job of that. I'm not going to deny that. Like, one of the ones that comes to mind right now is one that Rock made. It was in his latest set, and it was just called Maze. And essentially, this level is this really hilarious joke where you, it looks like you're in this invisible wall maze, and it kind of has some blue walls as well. And then you discover that the entire level, uh, except maybe a few walls at the end, is open. Like there's nothing. And so you're just going around wandering aimlessly thinking that you're going to hit something when really you're not. And it's really kind of funny as a result. So I, I just love levels like that. You know, I don't know. You know, you can debate whether or not they belong in an official set. But... I wouldn't mind seeing one in an official set, admittedly. I mean, I think there is a place for stuff like that. I mean, just my opinion. Um, I, I wouldn't want a whole set of those. I think they are best used sparingly. But at least it's a level that has thought put into it. It's not just, I'm going to throw as much stuff as I can on the board. Because, I mean, seriously, there are some levels out there where that's pretty much all it is. And I'm one of those people, unfortunately, who has done that. You know, I'm guilty too, so I'm not trying to I'm not trying to say that I'm above that or anything like that. I mean, I've done it as well. And so there's this sense of scale that you kinda of have to keep in mind when you construct stuff. So anyway, those are kind of my thoughts about level design today. So sorry if that was a little much, but I've had those thoughts for a while, and as CCLP4 is being constructed, I really hope that the set is diverse. Because, um, I mean, admittedly, CCLP1, I feel like one of the things that CCLP1, uh, and I'm going to explain this more when I LP that set, but I feel like that set was kind of backed into a corner, in a sense. And yet, it had a little bit of um, hype to live up to, like pre-set expectations because it had a specific purpose. It's kind of like, uh, the best way I can put it is Star Wars The Force Awakens. Now, there are a lot of people who were upset about this movie because it felt a lot like A New Hope, the original Star Wars. Personally, I was not one of those people because I realized that this, the movie had a whole lot to live up to. And one of the expectations it had to fulfill 
was that it had to explain to a whole new generation of fans why the original was as good as it was, while improving on some things, um, you know, with movie-making techniques and whatnot that have evolved over time. I'd like to think that CCLP1 is kind of like the Force Awakens of Chip's Challenge. Maybe that's a terrible comparison, and I'm sorry if it is, but in a lot of ways, it had to do the same things. It had to to a new generation of Chips Challenge fans why we love the game. And some of them have some of them haven't, but you know, we intended it for, for it to be a legally available uh, download that served as an alternate, you know, beginner's set instead of CCLB2, which is admittedly kind of a mixed bag. So much like Star Wars tried to, you know, update a classic story with new special effects and new movie making techniques, um, CCLP one, I think there's still a ship over. Yeah, there is. Uh, CCLP one did the same thing. Uh, at least it tried to do the same thing for new players. So. Because of that, I feel like we couldn't go certain places with the set. Like, we couldn't make the set too difficult because it had to be... Uh, and now I just realized I may have missed something down the bottom. I'll have to see, though. Maybe not. Come to think of it, I don't think I did. Yeah, well, we'll see. Hang on one sec. I'm just thinking here for a minute. Yeah, because of that, we couldn't really have many hard levels, so there were some designers who were very specialized in hard levels, or who really built a lot of those things, who felt gypped out of, you know, some of their levels and whatnot. And personally, I, was, I felt really bad about that. Like, I, I really want CCLP4 to be built pretty soon, because not only does CC2 uh, out now, but um, I need to get that other block, don't I? Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and review all these because I don't, I do not want to make a single mistake here. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right, I feel better now. But yeah, I mean, I, I hope that the set can have a difficulty curve that's reasonable. Like it starts easy and then it gets to pretty tough stuff. Because, I mean, CCULP1 didn't really get very far in difficulty. I mean, it had a few difficult levels toward the end, but even those were pretty reasonable. I mean, they weren't anything too crazy or anything like that. CCLP3, on the other hand, the problem with that set was that it started off with a few easy things, but then it just immediately dove into the hard stuff, and it didn't really let up. And we finally finished Checkerboard 1. Thank goodness. On to Bumble Boy! Yay! Isn't Bumble Boy adorable? Yeah. I don't know why I said that. Um, but anyway, I hope it can do both. Like, it can have the somewhat tough stuff, but not too quickly. Like, there's still room for some easy stuff. Because, I mean, I do think there is a pretty large contingent of designs and designers who have designed more friendly and easy stuff since CCLP1. So I hope that that doesn't really, you know deter, you know, hard levels from being in the set, but I do want those easy levels to be in, be represented very well too, um, if that makes sense. So, yeah, it is kind of an interesting process building a, a CCLP. I definitely made some mistakes when I led, you know, the effort for CCLP 3, but I'm hoping that the CCLP 4 staff can learn from my failures and make a really quality product. And now that bug will go and press that, and we enable us to escape. Bumble Boy complete. On to Chip Search. Now, I actually have this level open in the editor. Oh, that level that we just played was made by Eric Schmidt, by the way. Um, the level I... Uh, this, is, this level I have open in the editor just because it is rather uh, mean in terms of hidden stuff. So I just want to make sure that I don't get into another guessing game situation like I did with the last video and everything there. And this part is one of them, because like a bunch of these chips have traps underneath them, and that's not very nice, you know? I, I'm not a big fan of that. Now, I can't remember if this 
particular chip can be collected. Apparently not. Okay. So, we can't get that. So, lesson learned. Don't collect that chip at all. And hopefully the rest of this won't be quite so hard. Because really, once you learn which things have stuff hidden under them, this level is actually pretty easy. It's just getting past that bit that's kind of a little annoying. I'm just going to go and put that there. This is another, in case you couldn't tell, this is another Dave Boardman level. Invalid tile combinations for the win. We still have yet to get some keys, and I want to say that most of them are in here, right? We need to press glider cloner, which I believe is what these buttons are for. Let's go ahead and grab these guys, and then go back and grab the yellow key. Get the chip, and then we just have a simple... Oh, I forgot about that. There's bombs underneath those blocks, because why not? That's not annoying at all. Yeah, see this is one reason why CCLP2 will never be my favorite set, is because of stuff like this. And that goes for CC2 as well. I know I've been kind of heaping some praise on CC2 lately, but the main reason why is, well, twofold. One is just because I think it is kind of under what everyone was expecting. You know, a lot of people were expecting a set that was, you know, pretty much congruent with the way we design levels now, whereas, you know, it was very reflective of the level design of that time. Uh, and so I can't really fault it for that. I mean, the same thing goes for this set, to be honest, you know, so I can't really... I have to apply the same standards, but... Oh, where's the... Where are the last three? Oh, the tanks, right, the tank section. Duh. But yeah, I... I think the thing about this set that just is kind of a little awkward is that it is a CCLP, and the CCLPs have increased in quality since this was released. So this does kind of feel like a bit of an oddball set. But that being said, it still has a lot of great stuff in it, so I'm not complaining too much. Buggy Wall. I think this was made by Paul Hobden, if I'm not mistaken. And that was really silly. I'm not sure why I did that. Let's try it again. This time with less death. I think, if I'm not mistaken, you don't actually need the yellow key in this level at all, even, so that may be unnecessary, that little thing I did there. So let's actually go a little further to the blue key. And see if this will work. It did, and we got the bold time. So that's buggy wall complete. Moving on to firebugs. This is another Dave Borgman level, which uh, it was actually originally named Fireflies. Funnily enough, is funnily ord? I don't know. Uh, in the original set release, and to that, uh, to the uh, on the same note, uh, the le earlier level, Fire and Water, which was level twenty nine, was named. Uh, I mean, there's nothing there, was named Fire Trap. And both of those level titles were in the original game, which somehow slipped past the CCLP2 staff. So after the set's release, they went back and changed the names to what you see now, which is nice, because uh, I do not like having duplicate titles. That being said, I, I was guilty of this almost in CCLP3 because there is a level there named Spiral, and CC1 has Spiralds, plural. So, I probably should have changed that because it is very close. And anyway, I'm rather lost. I'm not sure where we we're supposed to go here. Whoa. That was close. Okay, here we go. 
Let's get this guy. See, that right there, that's just mean. I mean, I don't care where you're from. That that right there is just mean. I've kind of given up on speed running this as part of the Let's Play. <laughs> I was trying to go really fast at the beginning, and then, you know, at this point I'm like, you know what, forget that. I mean, I'm going to try to still go at a really fast pace, but, you know, I'm not obsessed with it anymore or anything like that. You know, at least I don't want to be too crazy about it. So I'll just do my best, and we'll see what happens. And I'm trying to watch out for bugs coming around corners and stuff like that. Okay, I think it's this way. Okay, good. Is this that way? I don't know where that path to the right goes, but I want to say there's water there, so I'm not going to do that quite yet. And then this. Uh, why did you have to put that there? Like, was that really necessary? And yes, there was water there. And now I've cooked the level thanks to that. See, that sort of thing, I I just don't hold with that in level design. I'm just gonna start over because I wanna I wanna try to get this sort of optimized now that I've played it so much. Uh so okay, I lied. Maybe I am gonna try to do this rather quickly. You can't take the optimizer out of JB. You just can't. I do like the, the shapes of these rooms. Like I just like how they're just really random and arbitrary. I'm not the biggest fan of the narrow uh, passages between the rooms, since you can get sniped there when you're going the opposite direction as the bugs. But besides that, I mean, I do like the way that this is laid out. So let's go down here. And this time, not fail. Okay, so now we just need to get this, and I happen to know the exit is under a floor tile. That's right, this level actually... I forgot you have to get the fire boots. This level actually forces you to go roam around the entire thing to find the exit. Why that is, I'm not sure. Like, I, I don't know the reasoning for that, but... Yeah, it is what it is, so. This is one reason I'm very glad the CCLP2 Lynx project is a thing, because it really took some of these levels that had rather unfair concepts, and it made them a little more palatable. And yet, somehow, you know, they managed to still retain the essence of the original levels, for the most part. Like, Block Away, you know, remember when, when I talked about how unfair that ending was? I mean, they still retained the guesswork, but it was a little bit less ridiculous. Okay, here we go. Let's try this again. This time, hopefully, with 100% more success. I think... It's here. And I almost got the bold time, but not quite. Anyway, on to level 77, Mad D Maze. Beware, this is both mad and a maze. You have been warned. Uh, and that was not very good. This level is uh, one of, at least I think, one of the toughest bold times in the set. Because you got to deal with this random force floor room, for one thing. And then you got to deal with blobs in the next room. So you got two doses of randomness in this level already, which is a little much. Um, like right there, I mean, that blob, you know, configuration, I mean, that's just ridiculous. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up so I can block the clone... Well, apparently I'm not going to be blocking the clone machine today. Uh, but I am going to set it up like this so that it is a little bit less of a, an issue, hopefully. We'll see what happens. And now the gliders are going in there, which is not a good thing. I don't think it's going to be too bad, though, because in MS they die in the fire. In Lynx, that would be an issue. Yeah, I mean, they just go right through there, so I'm not too upset about that. Just keep on going, and we'll see what happens. 
There's more ships down there, but I'm going to approach them from the top. So yeah, this is Mad Maze by Paul Hobden. Um, really fun level. I mean, aside from the optimizing part of it, it's a really fun level. The Search for the Exit, another Dave Borgman level. This one is has a very interesting history behind it because it's, there's actually a bust in this level that was discovered through an LP of this game, uh, of this set, by, by Rock, I believe it was. He uh, thought of the idea... Um, and I'm not sure if that there was a choice there or what, but anyway, I'm just going to go through and get all these chips. But basically, um, I'll show you what's what's up here. So over here, there's this room, and it's got the, these. Uh, I believe there's traps all around this room. You can get skates there hidden under the floor. Um, there's a teeth monster toward the start that you can release from a trap. And there's also a trap under that exit tile there. And by having the teeth go there, you can actually effectively erase that tile, uh, that, that trap tile from that, which is really nifty. It's kind of mean, but it's a very clever bust. And I mean, it uses invalid tiles in a way that's not required, so I can't really complain about that too much. This, however, is the intended solution. Um, and I can't remember. Yeah, this this is the thing that's safe. The dirt, I believe, have, has traps underneath it, so you don't want to remove that. But you just have to go here into the exit and leave the level, pretty much. So that's the search for the exit. Done and done. Krazi is next. This is a Drew Thomas joint. Uh, that was... Uh, okay, so, yeah, I'm sending fireballs to deal with all this stuff here, and they're just going to blow up all the bombs, pretty much. And that was not a smart idea. Wow. Fail, fail, fail. And I forgot that it goes the opposite direction, too. Come on. I keep mixing up which teleports I go through, and it's just throwing me off. There we go. Alright, I'm going to try to play this safe. We'll see what happens here. And by play it safe, I mean do the exact same thing I was doing last time, which... Uh, pretty much got me killed, and yeah, okay. <laughs> this is just... I don't know what's going on here. Alright, I got an idea. By that, I don't mean that idea, I mean... Wow. Okay, I think I'm onto something here if I do this, and then... I forgot the bold route to this, guys. I'm sorry. Alright, there we go. That's more like it. I can jump in front of that. There we go. Thankfully, the toggle wall wasn't in the correct state, so that wasn't so bad. Um, Frost Swirl is the next level. This is a Tire Folly level. And it is quite a level, too, I must admit. Um, it's basically just the key swapping, you know, item swapping thing. But the design of it is just so awesome. Like, I love the design of this level. It's just so gorgeous. Like, even just playing it, but especially if you look in the editor, oh, man. Like, it is just insane just how cool it looks. So all you have to do is just watch out for these balls here, pretty much. There's not anything particularly devious or nasty. So just wait for them to come around, and you're, you should be good. And the paths are the exact same length, too, so no uh, no weird stuff to worry about here. They're, they're also positioned at the exact same space as well along their respective routes. So... You know, when you see one, you can be like, oh, okay, so this is going to be over here on the other side or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to cross over back to the 
right side, hopefully. Okay, so I need to have a blue or yellow key when I come back. Hopefully this will work. Okay, so it didn't work, so I'm gonna have to get this one first. Oh well, that's all right. I, I, I can still just go right back here without waiting, so that's nice. All right, so I'm just gonna wait right here and we're just gonna have the ball come back and we'll exit. And I think we're gonna wrap up the video here because uh, checkerboard one was just such a time killer. So I think we're just gonna leave things be for now and exit. So thanks for watching, guys. This has been fun. Next time we're gonna take on just enough in the next video. Feels good to say that again. So until next time, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed yourself today, and I will catch you next time on the flip side. So take care, and I will see you then.